All right, y'all. So I'm back um, with another video on specifically Yale's online PA program. You guys asked for this video, um, this particular school, and so that's why I'm doing it. And if you are interested in having a school that you want to attend, um, like kind of be reviewed and for me to go live with that, just let me know. Um, and I will do it for you all. Um, so let's get kind of into it, right? I just wanted to make sure that the stream, the stream is going on my YouTube channel. All right. So I'm going to just kind of share again, where I get the list of schools from. Uh, if you are interested, please leave your comments in the comment section below on what school you want to do next. Uh, let me go right here and share this tab. So I always go to CASPA um, when looking at my school. So caspa.liaisoncast.com is where you can go, or you could just type in CASPA in Google. It will take you to this main page. This is our central application site for PA um, school. You will click here. It's always highlighted. Wait, wait, no. Let me actually, you will go down. What's going on? List of Yes. So list of developing programs, and then we will slide down. It tells you kind of like all the, the deadlines per se. Um, and let me share that aspect to you guys as well. This is where you can see all of the, the, the various different, um, schools okay so let's go to participating programs share for you guys you'll have all of the various different schools here i don't think they give you like a list of in terms of the number specifically of how many schools are participating in caspa but obviously there are schools that don't participate in caspa so you can apply to those schools as well but these are all the list of schools that are participating in caspa and you can choose here which school um, you want to do Okay, so let me go to a different tab for you guys. And that will be the Yale tab, which is what you came here for. I hope you guys are doing well. It's the end of PA week. I don't know if you guys knew that, but PA week is from October 6th to October 12th. And so um, this will mark the end of PA week. So if you know a PA or anyone that is in the PA field or wants to get into the PA field, wish them happy PA week. Okay. Because we like hearing that. I know I do. I like feeling appreciated, you guys. Who doesn't? Okay. So happy PA week. It's like having a birthday. But here we have Yale School of Medicine Physician Assistant Online Program. Okay, so I like it. Clean site, really, really easy. Um, why is Yale PA Online right for you? Okay, so uh, they give you a reason, like just, I guess, a reason why the online model might be be well for you. The online PA program prepares patient-focused clinicians who can choose to learn in their own communities. Okay, and so I like that. Um, that's a nice uh, kind of push for somebody that wants to stay like home or stay local. You get to stay where your base is. Uh, and, and that's cool that you get to, you don't have to uproot a family. So this is like good for people who um, are have a base where maybe you're you're dependent on you know like your tribe or you you are the breadwinner for the family or whatever the case may be you don't have to uproot that so this is cool all right so admissions requirements let's go right here i like this um to be considered for admissions to the program applicants must hold or be working towards a bachelor's degree uh, at a U.S. college or university, or cre regionally accredited, have completed a minimum of 500 patient care hours. Okay, so it says paid. Hmm. Okay, so I guess you, you, you know, it's not like this is not volunteering. Okay, like this was your job, like you were an EMT, EMS, CNA, whatever the case may be, it has to be paid. This is not volunteer experience. Um, and then be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. And 
their GPA is 3.0 for both cumulative and science. That's their minimum um, requirement. So, you know, that's that's kind of like the same that we've been seeing across the board for most of these programs. It's all All right, can you guys hear me now? Sorry, my camera cut out, and so I'm just working on that, but I still want to talk to you all about the actual program. All right, can you guys hear me now? Sorry, my camera cut out, and so I'm just working on that, but I still want to talk to you all about the actual program. All right, can you guys hear me now? Sorry, my camera okay. cut out, and so I'm just working on that, but I still want to all right so okay great you can hear me now all right so here we have um yale's prerequisites and yeah i think that it absolutely would be extremely convenient um i think that would have been something that i would have for sure been looking into had i have known about their pa program um, or had it been in existence because it hadn't been in existence yet um, as an online option but for those of you that want to stay close to home, this is the program for you because you can do you can be at home and and then, you know, still go to PA school and not have have to uproot anyone. Um, so da, 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 has adjusted our prerequisite grade requirements for courses taken during the. OK, so this really doesn't apply to you. This would have been if you were applying to Yale. And let me just quickly go back to see when their deadline was, you guys, because um, I th think it might have passed, but let me just check and make sure. And I'm doing this on the CASPA liaison site, okay? Uh, QRS, TV, WXY, they're the last ones. Okay, so yeah, so Yale's deadline was September of this year. So if you were going to apply to Yale or you had applied um, this last coming cycle, then these prerequisite requirements um, would have been a good, like a good marker for you. But now they're going to go back to what their regular prerequisite requirements are um, in terms of the grade. It says for courses taken during the pandemic where colleges and universities offered pass or fails grades, 
uh, they it will fulfill the prerequisite requirement. But typically speaking, it does not fill their prerequisite requirements. You have to have a letter grade, okay? Um, so their prerequisites that they require are statistics or calculus, biochemistry or organic chemistry, uh, physiology, microbiology, and human anatomy. In order to meet the requirement, prerequisite courses must have been worth three plus credits at the college. Um, lab credits are not required, but may be considered to fulfill credit hour requirements. Uh, there's no expiration date for prerequisite courses, which is top notch. I really like that because again, um, we're gonna we're going through we're gonna go through all of these schools, you guys. Okay, so join me as we go through all of these various different programs. We are going to do that, and you will see that there are some schools who have these deadlines, these deadlines of five years or must have been completed within the last seven years or um, specifically it's talking about the science courses versus like your non-science courses, like your um, medical terminology could, doesn't have a deadline. Or uh, I saw a school, you know, a few years ago when I was applying and it had to have been completed within the last 13 months. You know, so it's things like that that makes this process a little bit difficult, but obviously, um, as we continue to go through all of them, you will see you'll you'll get your schools that you are really interested in, and then you can hone in on their specific requirements. Okay, um, so it says uh, prerequisite courses completed while earning a professional degree cannot be applied to prerequisite requirements. Okay, so that's um, that's interesting. Uh, you know, if you were going to pharmacy school or medical school, you can't now transfer over those prerequisites of like, um, you know, anatomy and physiology to these prerequisite requirements, which is interesting. I don't know why that is, but okay. Uh, it says, please note you can apply with one prerequisite course in progress. The course must be completed by October 1st of your application year with at least a B. In progress coursework can be verified by providing enrollment verification letter. Okay. All right. Um, so it just kind of goes in a little bit more in depth in terms of their prerequisite requirements, like what they want to see. Um, now, th this requirement cannot be satisfied by a course in cell biology, molecular organic. Um, Okay, please note human anatomy and physiology requirements can also be met with combined two semester courses. Okay, so this is interesting. And I mean, obviously, like, I don't know if this is true or not. Maybe you, somebody who attended Yale's online program, if they see this, they can, um, you know, drop a comment and let me know. Or if you're interested in their online program, you can ask them yourselves. But uh, it only has these like one, two, three, four, these five prerequisite requirements. Now, obviously, you cannot get to organic chemistry without taking general chemistry, or you can't get to anatomy and physiology um, without taking um,
texture is um, kind of good, okay? So uh, definitely look into that. And it says, obviously, that you can use the fee waiver to apply to their program. All right, what else do we have? Sorry, I'm back. Okay, uh, 500 hours, which is what we talked about. It says evaluations due to the global health emergency of COVID-19. The Yale PA program has adjusted their evaluations. So again, uh, this is like the newest cycle, obviously, um, since the pandemic, right? So they have to make all of these various different adjustments. And we're going to see this a lot on all those schools that we go to, um, at least over the next couple months, um, th this kind of uh, just adjustment saying like, hey, you know, because of COVID, we know everybody had a hard time. So <laughs> we're, we're making things a little bit better for you all. Um and I, I know that there are like even med schools that allow like their students graduated their students um, kind of early as well because of the pandemic. So and this is not just a PA school thing. Uh, additional recommendations, leadership experience, volunteer, uh, including virtual shadowing of a physician assistant um, are strongly encouraged. Interviews are extended only to select number of applicants they also do this multiple mini interview format. It says six 10-minute mini interviews is what you all will do. Um, okay, what else? Process. So that's the requirements. So we go through the process and requirements. So admissions timeline. Okay, CASPA opens up in April, like the end of April, like I always tell you guys. There are priority June deadlines. Um, the fina final deadline, okay, is September 1st, which is what's on CASPA's website. But look at this, you guys. It shows you here that interviews begin in June. So like I said, if you apply early, you might get, you might be one of the first to get an interview, which is actually pretty good. Okay. This is actually a pretty good thing. Um, so if you're interested in Yale's program, you know, start preparing now for next year, make sure that you have all of those things together. I tell you guys all the time that if you're interested in PA school, like open up a CASPA application and start filling out the information that you do have and you do know now because you don't have to apply. You don't have to like send off that application. All you have to do is put in the information and then you can close that application and not look at it again until April when CASPA opens up again and you just go, you just transfer over the information to the new cycle and it doesn't show up like you're, you know, a repeat applicant or anything like that. It just shows up as you're an applicant, you know, and you will be a first time applicant, but all of that information that takes a tedious amount of time to enter will already be done. So I, I suggest you guys use that pro tip right there because it will make your life so much more easier uh completion deadline um so i think that just just like kind of like what they were talking about with respect to having one um outstanding prerequisite it has to be completed by october 1st okay and interviews conclude whoa okay so interviews are concluded in october so you should absolutely positively lutely okay be applying to yale's online program between the months of like June and July. Um, September 1st, that gives you a 30 day like market break time, I guess you could say, where you have enough time to like uh, apply. Um, and then like, I, I guess, no, by September. And then you're, you're going to get accepted within a month. So you got to give yourself enough time to like plan everything out in terms of like, what exactly is it that you need to do? Because the last bit of interviews are going to be concluded in October. So if you are trying to really be part of this, uh, this program and this cohort, you got to do it early. I think that is like the main theme that I'm getting from this, this online program. It says classes begin in January. Uh, so there are January start and you can have like several different starts, January, you can have like a May start. Um, there are some places that have like a midsummer start and then like September um, starts as well. 
Um, connect with the Yale PA online admissions counselor. Oh, that's cool. So you guys can call their general admissions um, number here and they will connect you with an admissions counselor so that you can actually like speak to somebody at the school and ask them questions, which is always good. If there's somebody available to you to ask these questions, whatever questions it is you have, um, take that, take that opportunity to do that, you guys, because they're like handing you, you know, a golden ticket to their program, essentially. Uh, applicants must complete and submit an online application through CASPA. Okay, you can call CASPA, you know, or go to their online frequently asked questions site, complete application by October 1st. Applicants must have a verified CASPA application. Okay. Uh, admissions team will review interviews. So all interviews are conducted online via Zoom, uh, sticking with the online model, which is cool. Again, it's not, that's like so cheap for you guys. It's not, you're not going to spend all this extra money on top of what you're spending to actually apply to these programs and travel and lodging for your interview because it's going to be through Zoom. And I really... Like, it's nice, honestly, to, there. there is something to be said about, like, being in person and meeting the people that you're going to be in class with or, like, the professors that are going to be teaching you, like, in person. There is something to be said about that. But honestly, this model of, like, online stuff, like, online interviews, like, just actually, like, making it so much less expensive for the pre-PA students that are trying to get into PA school is so important um, because you're applying to so many programs. And I really, really hope that more schools adopt this online model of interviews in the future. Even if you're a brick and mortar school and you want to, um, you know, like you still want your students to come to the program, at least affording them the opportunity to do this model of online interview is really, really a good option to try and implement because you guys, it's, it's expensive. It's expensive. Uh, it says after the conclusion of our interview, our admissions committee selects candidates, um, and you will be notified via email. All right. Okay. So that is their process and timeline. We already run through prerequisites now what this is, events, maybe that's talking about, um, you know, some type of like special like Q&A or something. All right. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So like webinars. So if you're interested in hearing more about their program, um, there was a, a webinar on September 21st, September 8th. Um, so I don't see any new webinars coming up, but you can always request information, which is good. Um, so yeah, that's that technical standards. Look at that. So again, this is just kind of telling you like what you may need, um, what you should kind of possess uh, to actually be successful in their program, which all schools have these like technical standards set off. Uh, so, so that's something good that you should always look at. Always look at the technical standards because, you know, if you don't necessarily possess one of those skills or you like struggle in that, you might want to look and see like, is this really for me or can I actually thrive here? Um, and, you know, go from there. All right, tuition and financial aid. All right, this is definitely what we want to know um, because finances is key. Like you're going into a program that you will likely be in debt to for a little while, you know, um, while you kind of get a job and you work and you do all of those things while you're paying off this debt, less debt than medical school, but debt nonetheless. And so it's important that you know exactly how much you're going to be paying and, um, you know, if there's like financial assistance or anything like that available for you. Okay. So it says tuition. Tuition is $15,500 so $15,600. Let's just round it up. There's an activity fee of 200 and a technology fee of 200 
student budget. Okay, total cost of attendance includes tuition, room and board, books, transportation, health insurance, immersions, and other expenses. All right, I mean, I don't know what you need room and board for. Uh, is this their online program? Yeah. Okay, so first off, let's just look at this. It says the program itself costs $111,000. It's 28 months online. Um, and this figure should only be used as an estimation, it says, okay? Uh, so I'm looking at this and it says tuition, activity fee, technology fee, books and supplies, equipment. And it says room and board. And I'm confused as to why there's anything about room and board here because because you're an online program. So maybe somebody can let me know. Um, I think I saw that there was somebody that was in the chat that kind of had um, like went to Yale or something like that. So what specifically is this room and board for or about? I don't know. So, so that would be something to figure out. Uh, hospitalizations and miscellaneous, uh, travel to rotations may vary, obviously. So um, if you're, they're close or not close, the total budget. This second semester is like a beast. It's 77,000. What is this? Where is this extra $20,000 coming from? Personal immersion and transportation is up two thousand. Uh, room and board is up seven thousand, and tuition itself is up about fifteen thousand. Okay, so uh, just something to look at. I, I don't know what what that is about, but it is something that you should absolutely ask. That's where you can go ahead and ask the admissions counselor. Like, what are you talking about? What? Why would I? spend this much money on room and board when if if I'm staying home, right? The Yale's financial aid process, so you can apply um, through FAFSA. I, I hate saying that. I always used to say FAFSA, but it's not. The S is after the F, so FAFSA, okay? You can apply through that to get financial aid, um, grants, loans, things that you will likely have to re re um, repay. Uh, but you can always do one of those tuition reimbursement re, um, programs that, that various different places offer. If you look, work in rural areas or underserved communities um, or even for the government, things like that. Okay, it says tuition refund for purposes of determining the refund, 100% um, of tuition will be rebated for withdrawals that occur on or before the end of the first 10% of the term. Okay, um, a rebate of 50% is rebated if it occurs after the first 10%, but before the last day of the first quarter, uh, and then 25% for the midterm, students who withdraw for any reasons after the midterm will not get any portion of their tuition back. Okay, so that's just good to know, you know, if you're struggling in PA school, if something happens, you know, you have like, um, you know, some family issues or something like that, that you need to withdraw, like the, just follow these various different deadlines because it shows like you can get all of your money back if it's within the first 10%. I don't know how many days that is, but you know, a few days, if it's within the first 50%, you get, um, well, yeah, I would say that 50 to 70 or so percent, you get like 10, 50% of it back and then 25% if it's just before the midterm. Okay. All right. Um, oh, class profile. This is good. So uh, this is one of like the larger um, programs, clearly, because, you know, they can afford to do that. Uh, there are 81 students. It's all online. So like the overhead for having students uh, at a program is a little bit obviously less because this is all online based. But they have 81, 81 students. So that's really good because that means that, you know, you guys have like more of an opportunity to get into this program because you're not fighting for 25 slots or 30 slots or even 40 slots. It's essentially double that. So, um, or maybe even more. I don't know if anyone um, left the program or not, 
but 81 students, 27% of them have advanced degrees, like above, like a bachelor's. The cumulative GPA was 3.3 to 3.7. That's the range. Obviously, I didn't really say like their main average, but uh, 3.35. So those of you with 3.3s and you're like, oh man, like, can I get into PA school with that? Yes, you can. Um, the cumulative undergrad science, again, 3.39 to uh, to 3.8. So a little bit higher uh, than their overall GPA. Um, but with within that range, nonetheless, prerequisite GPA. So mean, so they can, they uh, calculate a prerequisite GPA. Um, and Again, if those prerequisites are literally just those like five glasses, like you can see why like some of these may be significantly higher. It's 3.7 to 4.0. So you can literally go through and be like, you know what? I want to go to Yale. So let me um, uh, pick out these like kind of cherry pick these classes because I didn't have like a bachelor's in science. I had a bachelor's in nutrition. So let me go through, get these classes in my like summer time. Um, spare time and you can ace these classes and your gpa will be a 4.0 um, in terms of your prerequisite but look at these hours patient care hours now we saw hours like this when we were looking at emory it says five thousand to seventeen thousand so although their minimum requirement is 500 like this this like range is deep okay so they're not playing games with these hours so even if you are killing it everywhere else, you need to make sure that these hours are, are up to par. Uh, personal background, total states. So 26 states represented um, of our 50. Uh, first generation underrepresented is 28% military vets. Oh, their average age is 32, which is significantly higher than... Um, the like the overall PA average, I believe that was like 27. So 32, you know, five years or so older, which means like, again, people that kind of like are settled in their their lives that maybe have families, things like that. Um, this this model of online learning looks looks really good for them. Age range of 23 to 55. Go 55 year old. I'm I'm happy that you're in there. I'm proud of you. Um, I like seeing people do what they want to do and do what they love to do. Uh, so this is this is great um, to even decide to maybe change careers or get a new career or start a career in your 50s. Like I applaud that. Uh, medically underserved areas, 28%, same in rural, 22%. All right, cool. And if you wanted to see, you can get there, um, just check out their little white coat ceremony here. Oh, so it's online. So I guess maybe the parents, is this like the parents doing it? I'm going to keep my stuff muted. Let me just look at this really quickly. Ah, uh, that's dope. You know, it's not like, Obviously, it's not the same. So she's in she's in a rural aspect. Uh, this is cool. I like that. Get your white coat. So you'll you or a family member will be white coating um, your yourself. Oh, he had his son do it. I like that. This is dope. You know, and it shows you like these people who they're doing it for. They're doing it for their families, maybe doing it for themselves. Um, and it makes sense as to why, hey, I, I actually, uh, I can't come to Yale, but I'm glad that I'm attending Yale. Okay. So cool stuff. All right. So I think that's it. Uh, I don't have anywhere else to go. All right. This is admission. So we just went over the admissions. Oh no, there's a lot PA on campus. What is that? Oh, that's their actual like on campus degree, I think. Okay, so let me go back here. Curriculum. Um, so just taking a look at the curriculum and the classes, you can go through and see uh, the classes that you will learn um, through their curriculum, clinical experience in early didactic year. Uh, you'll do your rotations. And I did speak to um, 
the director of Yale like a few years back about like how this works. And uh, it's essentially kind of like what I did where I searched out um, sites and asked them if they would take PA students if they were looking for affiliation agreements and they did that. But Yale also does their part to find those sites for you. Um, so that is really, really good. Uh, and again, so I suggest anybody that cannot just easily up and move, this this one is for you. Oh, on campus immersions. Okay, so you can you have these immersion days where you will go back to campus and you know meet some of your your fellow classmates in person and your professors to learn suturing and splinting, these various different things, uh, even get opportunities for lectures and speakers to come through. Uh, does it say how many the immersions last one week with one open lab time available in the evening? The first immersion occurs near the middle of the first semester. And the second occurs in the end of didactic. Third occurs just prior to program completion. Okay, and uh, travel and lodging is your responsibility. Okay, so again, <laughs> this is this is extra cost, but I mean you're kind of going down on that cost when you're you're staying at home. So three immersions are are what you get, and you'll be able to meet like your classmates and things. Uh, we really need student competencies, right? Like you will learn medical knowledge, interpret personal skills and communication skills, patient care. So these are just some of the things that you'll you'll get once you apply students. All right, so you can see some of the students here, uh, the current students. So successful completion of 15 mandatory and elective clinical rotations, grade of 72% or higher. So that is your, your, um, your benchmark for passing. Um, completion of medications for addition treatment, waiver training, adherence to PA code of ethics, great. Um, so this is clinical phase, didactic phase. It tells you everything that you know, you need for those various different phases of PA school while attending Yale's online program. Um, Yale degree audit. This tool allows students to monitor their academic progress through the program and view outstanding requirements. Students can access their degree, access their degree audit through the student information system. Okay. All right, proof of residency. All students are required to provide a proof of res res residency in the form of a valid current government issue ID. Okay, you're gonna have to have health insurance, of course, your immunizations, um, any certifications that you will need like to ask, actually to like get in and do your clinical rotations. You're gonna have to do like, HIPAA and OSHA um, and all of that. I don't know if this is something that they offer you or if you, you do that, you have to pay for that yourself. Um, so that would be something good to know. And let's go into the alum. All right, I don't really care about the alumni. I'm like, yay for you. Um, good stuff, Yale alumni. All right, so that was that. Let me just go to my chat now and see what you guys are talking about. Okay. Jacob, I guess, is the one who was really um, say, talking about the program. He's the one that's in the program. So he says it's a, a wonderful program. Um, Yale's PA online program emphasizes the need for students to stay in their hometown to both reduce the cost of attendance, but also because it increases the chances of the student practicing in their hometown upon graduation, which is actually good specifically for those rural areas that are in need of medical providers. Okay. So, uh, very convenient. I think it's a really good option for those that want to stay home or stay close to home. Um, I like that. Uh, it says, yep, Jacob again, yep, the program acknowledges the importance of students remaining close to support structure again. 
and he is in his didactic year at Yale right now. So congrats to you, Jacob, on getting into PA school, um, attending Yale, and um, you know, and and in the midst of didactic year, you're almost there. Uh, oh, let's see what he said about the prerequisites. Yeah, those are the only prerequisites for the program. They dropped genetics from the list for the 2021 application cycle. Okay, so again, I don't know. So specifically for the 2021 cycle, but I don't know if um, moving forward as we get out of like this whole like pandemic structure of things, if more um, more prerequisites are going to be added, like your biology and, and chemistry that is usually seen in some of these other programs. But if not, like I, I love that model. I mean, only five, five uh, classes that I have to essentially take to get into a PA program. I think that's pretty dope. You like, you could literally knock that out in a year. If you do take a gap year in less than a year, if you're starting off in the summer and be ready to apply by springtime. So um, I, I like it. Um, 80 seats for class of 2023 and the same for class of 2024. So 80 seats, that's a lot. That's like two PA schools in one, you guys. Um, because really like the average PA program is about like 35 seats, 40 seats. So um, having 80 seats is like, I'm sure it's super competitive because lots of people are probably trying to get into the program because, hey, it's Yale, right? You know, the prestige of that name. Um, but at the same time, it's online and you're able to stay at home. And uh, I, I love it. Um Jacob said, also not trying to troll here. I've been following it on for a while and attribute a portion of my success getting into PA school because of her. Ah, oh, thanks. Happy PA week. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's cool. It's good to hear. I always love to hear you guys' stories. Um, it says, uh, Nicole is saying here, those patient care hours are intimidating. And yeah, you know, I would say like 5,000 hours can be intimidating. Uh, it's a like it's a good amount of years. I would say, I think it's about two years that is what I calculated the last time. Um, but you can do it, you know, like you're working towards it right now. And if you have like a set timeline in your mind, I like I tell everybody, you know, think about when you want to get into PA school, but don't be like married to that particular date and timeline because things happen. So if you are trying to get into PA school um, and you want to get into in one year, you look at the programs that will meet those requirements. If you're trying to stay at home and you, you want to go to the online program that Yale offers, then you absolutely need to make sure that while you're preparing yourself for, for to be a good candidate, you're getting hours, be a CNA, you know, that takes like four weeks at minimum, it can take six weeks or eight weeks, depending on the program, but you can be a CNA. They are looking for people in the healthcare field um, because of the pandemic and all of these different job shortages. You, you got this. Okay. So don't let, don't be intimidated by that number. Just go for it. Okay. Um, Jacob said he had been a a paramedic for 14 years, but there were students that only had 500 hours, 501 hours. So, you know, don't be intimidated. Um, and Nicole again addressed that the video looked very diverse. Um, and yeah, all right, so I'm excited. Like there are lots of comments. If you guys are watching, leave your comment once this video like processes and um, kind of goes on my channel, leave your comments in the comment section below on what school you want me to do next. Um, if I don't, I have like some schools already um, that people have commented on. So I can, I can probably just go down the line, but if there are comments with like a bunch of likes on a particular school, or I just see a particular school over and over and over again, it will jump my list because what I'm trying to do is hit the schools that you want me to go through first, and then I will just continue to go um, in a alphabetical order, which is how CASPA is listed, okay? 
So that is it. Join me on Sunday for my next video. I don't know what it's going to be about, but you know, I will have a video out for you guys on Sunday and then join me again on Tuesday for the next school that I will be looking at. Um, and maybe I might just kind of continue to do this a little bit more throughout the week, add another day that I go live because there's a lot of schools to get through. And I want you guys to like get used to seeing all of these various different programs and what they uh, are requiring from you guys. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram at get that C university and on Instagram at Adana, the PA, um, happy PA week to you guys. I hope you guys had a great week. I hope the rest of your week is wonderful. Um, can't talk to you guys next time on a black screen. Okay. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> See you guys later. Thanks, Jacob, for all of your information.